how was Digital Load founded? I'd say by accident. It definitely wasn't planned. It just came out of a question of why hasn't someone made a stealth game in VR? And so that kind of kicked it all off. I played a spire and I remember just climbing the wall in the demo. Like you walked to a table, you pick up a gun, you holster it, you walk up to a wall and you can climb it. And I was like, oh my God, this is where VR needs to be. This is doing things that is unique to the medium. It's really uncharted territory. There's so much awesome stuff you can do. But we did that with Aspire 1. We want to take learnings from Aspire 1 and go, okay, but how can we do this better? You're working for the Aussie version of the CIA or MI6. You're a drone operator of the future and you're essentially putting your VR headset on in order to remotely control the Aspire operative. You're sneaking through sort of James Bond-esque facilities and international outposts. You're basically trying to save the world from like a global plot by this terrorist military organisation. And you play through levels and take out guards and you complete objectives. So to make Aspire 2 stand out even more, the second thing we've added is these playable frames. Cinder and Sooty. One is more for tactical and takedowns, one's a bit more for hiding and sneaking around. So both are very good for the stealth game, but both two are very, very different. Cinder is basically what players, I think, coming from Aspire 1 and obviously playing shooters in general would be comfortable with. Cinder is our full height soldier unit, similar to a regular size human. It's the height that lets Cinder be able to climb up to really tall places and also be quite an imposing figure on the guards. So Sudi's so all about predominantly built around stealth. He's small, he's tricky, he can fit in small gaps, and he has an awesome tool to distract other people by using his voice or by using the player's voice. Hands up. And you can just be a bit more cheeky as Sudi. You can create environments where it can go underneath tables or underneath like little pipes or something like that. Another big differentiator with the frames is they each have a signature gadget. For Cinder, you're shooting trank darts at the enemy. The interactivity of you just being able to go like that and kind of pull back a lever and shoot something feels really, really cool and again, so unique to VR. And as the tiny sooty character, you're actually shooting a noisemaker and the noisemaker hits an object and whatever you say into your hand comes out the location of the noisemaker. And so those two different abilities kind of really split the frames apart and how you want to play the game. The new co-op feature was the most requested thing that players wanted to see in Aspire 2. Multiplayer has been a lot of fun to watch grow and develop. It's the first time we've ever done anything multiplayer as a studio. We've been lucky with the support of Tripwire Presents. They were built around amazing multiplayer games, so they've been able to help us on technical and design challenges. As soon as you take a VR game into a multiplayer environment, there's all these interactions that just come out so you can go in holes, but Sin is really good for climbing because he's nice and tall. So you one will reach for the shotgun and hand it to the other player. You'll be finding goodies and ammunition and batteries and trading it with people who need it at the time. You can heal each other as well. There's a lot of fun in just kind of running around with a buddy and trying to coordinate and tricking the guards, using the noisemaker and coordinating what you're doing. And it's just, it's a really good time. So much of our culture is having fun while still trying to deliver the best possible experience we can for players because we want to make a game that we want to play. Lots of room for creativity and problem solving, but we work hard. Like, we don't crunch, but we do work hard. We've grown from about nine people to 24. There's a lot of passion for the work that we do and support for the team morphing and growing as we change from a backyard operation into more of a serious business. What's really cool about Load is that we're really good at developing specifically for VR. We really understand the medium. We understand what's unique about it. In terms of VR, there's still a lot of room to grow. The conventions haven't been established, so there's so many opportunities to find like successful solutions. It hasn't been done yet. So it's not as simple as just going to like the biggest titles and doing what they do because they've worked it out. We get to do some working out for ourselves, really, and I think that makes it really fun.